Hello and welcome to Monitoring SQL Server 2014 using alerts and notifications. My name is Steve Hamilton and I'll be your instructor for this course. Okay, let's get started. In this lesson, we will learn about alerts, notifications, as well as operators. We will also learn on how we can monitor specific SQL Server errors, how to configure database mail, by default, database mail is not automatically enabled. By the way, database mail is not the same as SQL mail. They're two completely different options. Database mail has effectively replaced SQL mail. We will specifically create operators, alerts, notifications. And at the end, there will be a lab on how you can create operators, alerts, and notifications. Let's talk about notifications. Well, we have notifications and we really have an alert. A notification is literally notifying somebody that something has happened. Either it has succeeded or failed or an alert has occurred. So a notification is strictly a vehicle to notify an operator. Well, what is an operator? An operator is effectively a database user with an email. The idea here is that we will proactively notify operators based off specific alerts or conditions within a job. The first step would be to create an operator. An operator is effectively a database user with an email. However, even before we do that, we should also enable database mail. Database mail enables us to send mail through the database to specific operators. That mail can be set through either private or public profiles. Public profiles is accessible to everyone. Private profiles is access accessible to specific users. When we send out notifications, those notifications can be emailed. They can also be texted. In prior versions, they could also be paged, but nobody uses pagers anymore and that has been deprecated. So in the scope of things, you actually set up database mail. Database mail allows the database literally to send mail. You would identify an operator. An operator is somebody who is going to receive the mail message. The operator literally is nothing more than an account with an email. You have to set up an operator before you can send out a notification. Okay. After you've established an operator, you can then create alert, and then your jobs, when a job has a notification, those notifications, or that notification can send information to the operator. One of the other things that we would create would be an alert. An alert is a proactive information sent to an operator that would tell them something bad is about to happen within your SQL Server instance. We want you to go out and take a look at this before your phone rings and the end user says, system is running slow or the system is down. We can create a series of alerts. We can create performance condition alerts, WMI alerts, or SQL Server event alerts. Typically, you will create a performance condition alert or a SQL Server event alert. You, will, you want to be notified well in advance before something negatively occurs. So we will create an alert, and then that alert will flag or be raised off a particular event. When that event occurs, we can send that alert to an operator. That alert can also call a response or a corrective action. With alerts, they can be alerts with the values of 0, 1 through 25. And again, what I was saying earlier, 1 through 10 is pretty much informational. 11 through 17 is more of a warning. And anything from 18 and above is critical. I need to take a look at this right now. We want to avoid the 18 to 25 errors. The 25 error is system down. So in a perfect world, we would receive those errors basically 0, 1 through 17, which are the warning and critical. 
and hopefully by fixing those, we can avoid 18 through 25. So SQL Server Agent works collectively with notifications, alerts, and operators. Within a SQL Server Agent job, we will set up a notification that will send information to a particular operator based off of a given schedule. All of these are designed to be proactive and prevent unscheduled downtime. Again, the best mark of a DBA is that nobody knows your name. So let's go ahead and start creating our operators, alerts, and notifications. This is all created under the SQL Server Agent. So under SQL Server Agent, we will go to Operators, do a right mouse click on Operator, create a new operator. Once we give it that new operator, we can then assign notifications to that operator. And within the SQL Server Agent job, we're gonna assign this notification to an operator. So here, I'm gonna give it the operator name, the operator email, and when is this operator available? This operator, DBA, has a pretty cush job because he only has to work Monday through Friday, eight to six. So now, when we assign a notification, we can say this notification is going to be assigned to this particular operator, and how would we wish to notify them? Email, page, or text. Now under SQL Server, we're also going to create an alert. Here, I've just given an alert, and it's a performance condition alert. Here I'm going to create a new alert. It's going to ask me what type of alert. It's going to be a SQL Server event alert, and it's going to get, be against what particular database. So I simply select the type of alert against what database, or I could choose all databases. And then what type of event alert that, it's, that I'm going to be notified on, I will select the particular event, and then it's going to ask me who do I want to notify, and I will have to notify a particular operator. So when this particular event occurs, the operator that I just created is going to be sent an email. It's going to specify the options, and here I'm going to say email and page, but typically it's always going to be email. If you want to script this to a query window, this is exactly the script that you would issue. Again, I would highly recommend that you do this through GUI. If you want, you can set this all up through command line or through SSMS within this new query window. But quite frankly, the best practice is to do it through the GUI. Here we're setting up the alerts as well as the operators. And this is just to show you the syntax that occurs behind the scenes. You'll notice that all of this is going to be stored in the MSDB database. The MSDB database is where your operators, your jobs, your notifications, and alerts are all stored. It is a very important database, so please make sure that you do back it up. So now we have notifications, we have alerts, we have operators, and jobs. The combination of all of these run the entire system. Put them all together. First, set up an operator, somebody who's going to receive the notification. A job is going to call a notification that's going to send that notification to an operator. An alert is going to occur when we're about to encounter some sort of error, and again, the operator will be notified. So the combination of all four of these things automate your entire system. If you don't have any combination of these, of these, the system will still run, the database will still work, but if something goes south, you're not going to be, be made aware of that until after it goes south. And that's the last thing that you want to have happen. Please take a second to download the exercise guide on the courses page on the materials tab, complete the exercise, watch the demo, and see how it's done. Thank you for attending.